a panel discussion um, about worst practices or best practices, but it's been a, an interesting road to get to this point. Uh, it doesn't feel like uh, that long ago, I don't know, that we started on a, our Vulcan journey. Um, so uh, thanks again for everyone joining us today. I uh, hope you find the session useful. And this is really a chance for, for you to grill us and for us to uh, what uh, the Kronos president, uh, Neil Trevitt, calls spirited discussions <laughs> about how things are going. Uh, I want to kick us off with a question about, um, start off with a negative, <laughs> uh, and then we'll move on to more, more rosy land. Uh, in the journey we've had of getting to where we are with Vulcan, um, be it uh, implementing a driver, uh, developing the spec, or moving your engines over, what is your worst experience in the journey to, to get you to here? We should ask them, but... <laughs> everyone can, can join, but everyone Tommy, you seem to be keen to <laughs> oh, mention your... your <laughs> I'm sure you've got a long list there. Right, well, as the, as the official chief cat herder of the, of the group, um, I would point to two. If you like the Vulcan descriptor model, if you find it clean and neat and elegant, Congratulations. Um, <laughs> the Vulcan descriptor model was the hardest technical issue we had in the design. The, what you see in the Vulcan 1.0 spec was version 12 of a series of proposals put together by Timothy Lottis, who was at Epic when he started and at AMD when he finished, because it took a year to, uh, to get that going. Um, so you can definitely send him an email or Twitter at him if, uh, if you find it obtuse. But uh, no, we owe him a great debt. It does. The thing is, it works for all the hardware. Who knew that was even possible? And that's why it was so bloody hard, because all the hardware is very sensitive to how you go from a shader running to, I want that resource. You know, we could have done something nice and clean like bindless. That would have totally sucked on some hardware. Um, so what we came up with works pretty well. And that was my, my main. Uh, number one nightmare, but I'm going to, I'm not done. <laughs> My number two nightmare was the name. So, so Vulcan was named. No, we're not having any naming discussions. When we realized, <laughs> oh shit, we're about to go public with this and we don't have a name and we don't have a logo and engineers are not marketing people, but they think they are. And so uh, we had a screaming fight. I'm not sure that anybody outside the group knows this. But the original name was going to be OpenGL 5, which would be OpenGL V. Sorry, it wasn't, it wasn't it going to be direct ISO. GL 3D well, Mental? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Open Mental 12. Yes. <laughs> okay, it was always right. on the assumption well, yeah, it there, was were the, there were the jokes about pounding on metal and uh, uh, Vulcan, the Greek god, who pounds on metal. Um, it, it ended up being that a lot of ISVs said, you know, OpenGL has kind of a mixed reputation among developers. <laughs> you might not want to ride that horse too hard. And it was actually Valve who came up with it, took the, the V, and of course, Valve, and, and said, well, how about Vulcan? And that was what eventually worked, not without a lot of screaming and hair pulling. Uh, but that was three days of my life I don't want to live again. Really? Because we had a meeting, we came to agreement, <laughs> on. then we came to the next meeting and everybody said, wait a minute, we don't have agreement. And we did it again and we said we have agreement. And we went away to dinner and then we came back and said, no, we don't have agreement. It was, just, it was really bad. But now we have a name and we're not going to change it. Okay. Done. Cool. I'm glad you commented too. Uh, wait a minute. Two. <laughs> <laughs> not the full list. And Hans Christian have it so. So I'm a bit worried about the whole cache it is the way to solve every Vulcan problem in an engine. It's like, this thing is too slow, cache it. I mean, we do it in our own internal engine as well. Uh, descriptor sets, cache them, render pulses, cache them, frame buffers, cache them, uh, state with pipelines, cache them. Um, it's very hard to see where these things actually matter. And uh, it's pretty difficult for engines to actually make use of this, these things. To so bake everything in front, it's very, 
I mean, it makes a lot of sense that you should be able to, but it's very, very, very difficult for engines to actually do that. And then you just end up with, okay, I want to actually ship something and actually complete something in some sensible time frame, and then just do this hash map stuff everywhere, basically. I'm pretty sure we have uh, 40 different hash maps in our uh, backend, <laughs> something like that. So it's a very common, common solution. It seems to run surprisingly fast, but that's probably more that Atlas is very slow. Uh, rather than Vulkan being super fast, but I guess that's my biggest problem right now with Vulkan. So, Alan, I didn't, uh, sorry, uh, Dan, I'm um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Alan is the, uh, uh, <laughs> you wish we had this chair. It's yeah. Alan, Alan in, your, in an yeah. earpiece speaking. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, Dan, uh, I didn't detect any uh, negative issues <laughs> <laughs> in your, no, your no. slide deck. Um, uh, if you had to pick one, what? what what lessons have you learned what, what, through this experience? Can you switch off cameras, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that's for the beer festival after. Save that one. <laughs> no, I have to be brave. Okay, because Alan, Alan is surely watching this. Uh, our engine, our engine is, uh, it's, uh, Vulcan showed us how much our engine is outdated, and I'm really pleasantly surprised that it runs that well and that fast. And we are now finally uh, having some new programmers that will, will gradually change the engine to match the Vulcan, more, more to the math. Metal is not a wrong, wrong, wrong word to write. <laughs> no, <laughs> no it's, it's like it will going to be much more Vulcan friendly. And at the beginning, I have to be honest, when I saw, for example, pipeline state object, and inside is everything and the kitchen sink, mm -hmm. and I was like, this is way too overboard. Well, it is like GPU works. So it might be that our engine enable blend uh, bind texture in unit seven is maybe, it is really outdated. So yeah, it was implementing Vulkan, you know, from day to day, week to week, it showed us, okay, I have to do a to-do list for the engine, what to change. This was, this was the number one frustration. Fred. Um, so, in, in my case, it was slightly similar to uh, what Tom was saying. Uh, I don't appreciate the script sets. They, they do map well to the hardware, but it's, it's very hard to, to grasp. And some of the validation layers I dealt with was about the script set layout being linked to another object, a pipeline layout, um, that's not compatible with the current descriptor set. So it's lots of objects that are wrapped together. It's, it's hard to make a link and figure out what's wrong. But I think as you, as you use it uh, for a long time, you start to understand exactly the benefits of having descriptor sets. They map well to, to the hardware, but also, um, well, you have to read the spec many, many times. And once you do know how to use them, it, it, it is somewhat easier. Um, so in my case, it was that synchronization as well, which <laughs> is Tobias' oh favorite God. topic. <laughs> you are the synchronizer. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it, it was also uh, the, um, so my, my experience has been mostly supporting Vingroi, which was, uh, so th this was an open GLES game, so we had the limitation that we had to keep the, the engine, um, or the core modules similar as to, as, to their, as to how they were before, so we couldn't really take advantage of Vulkan, and it's, it's hard to follow an OpenGL rendering pipeline with Vulkan, because you need to know lots of things in advance. And that was one of the things I, that, that was very tough. Uh, for me and also for the team who's worked on it. Oh, me. Um, <laughs> well, firstly, I would like to, you know, just a, just an overall comment. I, I sometimes do want to substitute. Whenever anyone says, I want to port my engine to Vulcan, I kind of substitute in my head, I want to drag kicking and screaming my <laughs> engine over to Vulcan. Um, because everyone, you know, you know, there's a, a lot of stuff, particularly the whole pre-computing, knowing stuff in advance stuff is often a source of pain. I think everyone mentioned that, actually, but Tom. Um, and, but, and yes, obviously, I'm going to talk about synchronization now because synchronization, apparently, Mr. Synchronization. <laughs> um, you know, it's, there's a lot of stuff. The pre-computing thing is one, descript sets for another. Synchronization is definitely another. I mean, in GL, you had fences and you had memory barriers, but they were kind of heavyweight and only really for compute type things. Um, but, you know, Vulcan synchronization model is really complicated. I still don't understand how I understand it. I'm not even convinced I do entirely, but we'll see. Uh, but the, um, you know, you do see people doing a lot of stuff in production code. I mean, there's not much of it yet, and people are still considering it to eat us. So it's not so bad, but you do see things like 
device weight idle rate place or uh, synchronizing with every single Pipefly stage between each draw or just like really, really gnarly, like I'm going to synchronize everything to get it running. Um, but those seem to be going away over time. But you know, it's it's the sort of thing that it, it irks me whenever I see it. Because I know you can do better. But that's just me. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, what's, what's all the fuss with this synchronization? And I haven't had the synchronization bug since Monday. We <laughs> 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 updated to the new SDK. And see, oh, he had to are, you, are you Monday. sure it was Monday? <laughs> 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 it took a while to arrive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, but I think that what, what I've seen that the Vulcan has taught me and not many others is, is kind of the real pains of this is actually how the hardware works. This is what really, really has to ha happen. Uh, and really do not want to end up in some of the, the world we've ended up with, with GL finish being uh, kind of. It's sort of finish. Um, yeah, I, I actually want to stick in another, it's, it's not exactly a negative, but a sort of a heartbreaking realization for me uh, after a while was realizing that if we wanted to have a low level API, which was going to be portable and cross device and cross GPU, there's only one way it was going to happen. So Vulkan is incredibly verbose. You have to specify an incredible amount of stuff and you have to track stuff, as Dan talked about, the you know, source destination, and why can't the driver do that for me? So what I realized was that when Vulcan asks something unpleasant and painful of you to specify, it may be only one driver in the world that needs that, but there's one. And we're trying to run on that hardware, too. Just point me that one. <laughs> it depends what you're asking about is the problem. We're all under NDA. I would probably say it's not unfair to say that uh, everyone has a dirty little secret like that in the API. Pretty like much. you could just point yeah. to anyone and you'd find something. Yeah, somebody's guilty. But actually, I will say the other thing which is good, and also we had the issue that uh, frequently that, you know, there's several ways to do something and it's, uh, fast for everyone and it's slow for one of us. And I really expected, um, you know, the knives to come out. And sometimes they do. But in general, I'm pleased and gratified, so this is on the good side, uh, that in general, the kind of conversation we have is, uh, yeah, that's really going to kind of suck on our architecture. And, and the question will be, from the rest of the group, it works for everyone else, can't you work around it? And a surprising number of times, people are willing to work around it. So everybody, all the hardware vendors, pretty much, <laughs> well, <laughs> they've, been willing, they've been willing at some point to say, OK, uh, yeah, that is not great for me, but I'll eat it because well, it seems to work for everyone I would else. say, because I don't want to make people think, going away from here, thinking, oh, there are slow parts involved, because that's certainly not the case. No. Something really sucks. People really will say, sucks, we'll we change it, it or we'll take it out. Right, but we... But th I think the thing we guarantee, we've been very, very careful to try and guarantee, is that the path you can choose in Vulkan is the fastest path you can do on any given hardware. Not the fast path, but the fastest path. So you would it, ideally, I mean, we've seen it a lot already, I think, in what people are doing with performance recommendations. I mean, I've looked over ARM's performance recommendations, and they're pretty similar to what ours will be when we finally release them. Um, and that mm -hmm. seems to ring true for a lot of vendors. Right. Uh, Sorry, nice. I, I did risk misleading you when I said that's going to suck for us. I, if, it, if it's really going to suck for somebody, and we may push them and say, why? And they may tell us, sort of, or they may hint. But eventually, we do come to consensus. And if it's really going to suck for them, we take it out. So because we do want, this is one of our promises, was we didn't want to say, you're going to get on the device and choose a, a path that is only for that hardware. Because we wanted to be able to write one path in Vulkan, one code path that was reasonably, you know, pretty damn good, um, rather than having to say a different, you know, write your code in a completely different way for a Tyler. Well, I don't know how successful we were at that, but we tried really hard. So b b before we end up with a full legal disclaimer of what, what a fast path means, I uh, wanted to just um, broaden the, uh, the question for others that have had experience, if you want to chip in uh, with, with any, any anecdotes you have uh, <laughs> looking around. Or admissions. <laughs> or, and if not, uh, questions you have of, 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 of the panel. 
person in quiet. No takers. No, no. Ah. <laughs> trust your trust, trust, trust and BT. No, no, no. I'll always if there's a microphone, phone, I'll grab it from now. As always. Um, so um, I, I, I have the unenviable task of teaching 40-something master's students next year Vulcan, um, and uh, some of whom are artists. Um, and um, so um, uh, I, I've been working on a little wrapper, as you, as you say, track, tracking the states of, um, of images, the, the state of images, for instance, is something I've put, I put into this wrapper to make it easy for even artists to, to do Vulcan programming. Um, so so what, what, no, what kind of things should, should we teach um, to aspiring game programmers when it comes to Vulcan, do you think? Well, all the things we just said. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we're, we were all about to say, don't do that. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, my, my view is that um, obviously you don't want to be trying to teach them graphics and teach them Vulkan at the same time. And I, I like to say that Vulkan is not a graphics API. It is an API for controlling and programming GPUs. And just think of it that way. It's a way of talking to a class of hardware. Um, so, so the main thing I would say, make sure they know everything they need to know about graphics before they even get started. Um, I think I'll, give, I'll pass and see if I think of anything else. Um, yeah, go on. Uh, it would help if they have some idea of how synchronization works on multiple cores in the CPU um, before you dive into any of the synchronization <laughs> stuff. Uh, but I do think that's an important concept. I mean, it, part of the reason it confuses people to look at synchronization is that in GLES and stuff, you don't really care about it. Like the asynchronous nature of the GPU is sort of hidden from you. It's not really hidden from you, but it's hidden from you enough that you can just sort of not worry about it. Um, and that's not true in Vulkan anymore. So anyone who's like porting a GL game can be sort of shocked by it if they're not already up to date. With it. You're also limited to a single thread for rendering. Um, so that, that can be a shock to the system for some people. And I imagine for students who've learned graphics, maybe by open GL, they, that might really yeah, be a startling moment. I guess if you say you have to master four threads on the CPU before you can, I guess you have to master four threads on the CPU before you can master a million threads on the GPU. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, so, uh, so. So, so in, pra in practice, in practice, what I do is I just give them Space Invaders and they hack it. Um, and uh, because they've got a working game, they don't need to worry about the synchronization because it's kind of all happening there magically. Um, and then only if they, they start running into problems do they do they have to start digging a bit deeper into 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 how it all works. Um, I, I, I don't I don't like teaching Hello World programs to people. It's um, uh, it's not a terribly exciting way to learn programming. Oh, I don't need this. Why am I taking that? There's a microphone here. Why do we, get, why do we start doing that? And then Tom, Tom started. Tom, so um, yeah, well, one other thing I would say is that uh, this, I don't know if such a thing exists. I mean, I imagine there are some things out there. I know there are various SDKs for my HVs and other things that exist, but um, having a high level of abstraction over Vulkan that looks a bit like Vulkan with Vulkan concepts in, like rent files and stuff like that, will in the long run be a probably a useful tool for teaching graphics and Vulkan, um, because at least it at least it will be his graphics and his the co some of the concepts you need to worry about, because I think, again, you know, going from GL land to Vulkan land, it's even like graphics, and then suddenly you're like, what the hell are all these things? So, again, another shock of the system. So. Yeah. yeah, I think it's a bit uh, like Tom was saying. So they really need to have some base <clears throat> in graphics, but also actually understanding the hardware they're targeting. Because mm -hmm. if, if you don't, then you don't really know why you have synchronization or barriers and also descriptors. I mean, the main reason they're in Vulkan is because they map well to the hardware. So if you understand the hardware, you know why you need to use those. And I think also understanding the concept of barriers in general, as in why they're useful in the program, is something that they should learn as well once they actually dive, well, before they actually dive into Vulkan, preferably. Do you have any other questions from the audience? I've got a few myself in the chamber, just in case. Cool. <laughs> uh, so a lot of the talks and everything have concentrated on a game engine or a game that you're playing, but I just wanted to hear if anyone's got more to say about content creation or tools that would use Vulkan to create you know, levels and so on and so forth. Um, so tools that will use Vulkan uh, uh, or studios to 
Yeah, yeah to thing? actually create, you know, game editors or level editors, stuff like that, that um, are more involved in the actual content creation rather than its actual final I, display I, in terms I of a game. I tend to think that's the job of the engine. So, so you know, whether it's a commercial engine like Unreal or I, I hope there are some, well, in fact, I know there are some open source engines targeting Vulcan now. I don't know how good they are. But generally, I think of the, the partition, the division of labor uh, is that, you know, the engine kit, and of course, engine is a flexible word. It can mean just a runtime, but typically a full featured engine includes tools for constructing levels and laying out navigation maps. And I, I kind of meant more as a, um, I mean, in the one case, you've probably already got a lot of static data available. In the other case, you've got a lot of, you're creating and destroying a lot of different data. I was wondering what kind of experiences people had with that, if uh, any. Zero in my case. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Same for me. No. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah. I, I didn't I, I think I it's just more of um, like, what's your impressions of using Vulkan for content creation? Uh, because you have a different kind are of... You, are you asking from like a user experience or...? Yeah. A from a developer experience, because you can't just create a game without having something to create the content for the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, are you asking, like, um, does Vulkan directly affect the tooling process? Is that the sort of thing you're asking, or...? I guess it's more how, how has it impacted the tooling process? Right. That you've uh, well, I mean, uh, one, of the th one, of the, one of the things mm -hmm. I've kind of seen is that um, a lot of, well, at least, like, discussions by Unity and Unreal, they've said uh, there's a lot of concepts in Vulkan that don't map to our thing, mostly around yeah. the whole pre-calculating and knowing stuff up front. It's like, oh, yeah, we just let that get specified during the render pass, uh, during the render loop, and then realizing later, oh my god, that doesn't work, um, because that beats all the hashing stuff that, um, that as Christian was mentioning, uh, which, you know, works, for some definition works, but is not anywhere near the optimal way. Uh, stuff like that, I think it's going to impact tooling, but it's going to be in quite subtle ways at first. Uh, I suspect things like uh, render passes might eventually bubble up higher to the, possibly to be exposed to uh, developers using content creation tools in some sense. I don't know what that will look like, but I imagine something like a no chain render, for, for, for render passes. Um, and I, I think even for beyond render passes, just to synchronization in general, I think that sort of tool will probably eventually come up with say, I mean, they, they already have these sorts of things today. It's like, here's a render pass, it's not a render pass, it's not a render pass. But. So Dan, have you found that um, a Vulcan API limit or restrictions or when information is needed that bubbled up all the way through the editor? Yeah, it's a, it is an interesting question because I, I was, when we port the editor like multi-window application to Vulkan, then we also realized on top of all the issues with the engine, editor has separate issues. Uh, things that we actually, that were a long time ago put in, some workarounds, for example, not resizing window, but destroying and creating them because at that time we didn't care. And now we should care about it. I mean, it works as is now, it works in Vulkan works fine but you know it, this is just the uh, lots of on the to-do list that needs to be done thank you any other questions I think Dean mentioned uh, in his talk he kind of had a sort of what if I did this and I'd like to kind of going, going forward I'd like to investigate this I've forgotten exactly what that was um, but the the idea behind it was that Vulcan now allows me this freedom and I want to take it and run with it and see what happens. Um, do any of you have any kind of other things to share in that kind of frame? You know, something where like Vulcan has freed up your, like, your programming create freedom in a way that now you can actually, um, you know, program something in a completely different paradigm and get way more performance out of it or I guess generally, you know, features, but it and that ends up being speed really. <laughs> that people end up focusing on. Right, for me, I mean, not going forwards right now. I mean, for me, I'm involved, I've been heavily involved in the design process, so I know what we were targeting things for. Um, and, you know, we worked with our dev tech guys a lot and other companies as well to design Vulcan and figured out quite a lot of things that you could do, um, like a lot. It was part of what took so long um, because you know this was meant to be explicit control enabling developers to do what they really wanted to do. So we looked at a whole ton of use cases, um, 
you know, things like, yes, we've been doing a shit ton of notes, and um, <laughs> but also, you know, memory aliasing, that sort of thing, render passes, how to enable that, uh, you know, various memory strategies, synchronization, uh, you know, enabling overlap with that sort of stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff like that that I've probably forgotten, um, but, you know, makes a lot of sense. There, there's probably stuff that you could do more. I probably, if you said it to me, I might remember it, because I know we talked about so goddamn much, but um, it's hard for me to prioritize any one of those things above anything else at the moment, I think. Uh, I, I think a lot of it is going to come out over time, and I suspect what will happen is as we, as we add more features to Vulkan, there will be more sorts of incidental things. It's like, oh, hang on, this thing and this thing go together. Now I can do this. But I do find, at least for, for Vulkan at the moment, we seem to be following more of a, a needs-based development rather than here's a feature, let's shove it in, which sort of felt like how GL was done. Um, not entirely, of course, but uh, so it's it's kind of, we kind of know the use cases up front, mostly. So we are listening quite hard to, uh, to <laughs> let developers tell us of the points of pain. We know that, well, we keep finding frankly, design bugs in the API. You may know that we've got an extension out called KHR Maintenance One, which just fixes a bunch of random stupid stuff that we put in the API by mistake. I will, I guess, admit that Maintenance Two is on the drawing board. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are, you know, there are, we're sure that between you and us, we're gonna find better ways to do things than Vulcan One exposes. So, I mean, one of my nightmares is, are we gonna break compatibility at some point? Well, at some point, but GL got by for 26 years without... Did it. Well, no, Did it. it. <laughs> Not necessarily. If, if you count, if you, count uh, if you leave out compatibility mode. But, um, you know, Tobias was just describing, he has some ideas for different way to synchronize that might be a lot better than what we do now, uh, that would still be compatible, but... Um, so anyway, we, we are really interested to know what um, what is what are the points of pain, and and to think about are there other ways we could do this without screwing up the API right. worse than it is now? Um, I'm not sure I'm answering the mm -hmm. question. <laughs> Basically, I think the point is if anyone comes yeah. up with use cases, yeah. they should tell us. I can say something along the lines of Tobias is that. Um, it's in the back of my head every time I see, you know, some feature that I need to work on. For example, memory aliasing. It can be lots of things done with that. Lots of time. Uh, but currently, uh, for the next uh, year or so, uh, I'm. This is my focus. You know, just implement Vulkan as much as possible directly, and then we'll broad then from that point on. I'm not even happy with having so much uh, extensions already in Vulkan. Because it's really hard to keep track. The latest one being the push the scripture. Alan actually managed to reply before me. Okay. So it, because it uh, it is it is rather complex, you know, API. And to get it right, you need a lot of time and effort. And if we are dedicated to this, you know, it's just a noise, you know, background noise with also new extension. You can also do this like that. You know, these options are. There are some there are some things that I already mentioned in my presentation that would li really be nice to have, like hints, performance mm -hmm. hints, because there are obviously some performance difference. It is fast or faster or fastest. Mm -hmm. So things like that, but these are strictly technical things. I'm not talking about having a new super bloom and the high uh, level uh, luminance calculation, stuff like that. <laughs> this is all things on my to-do list. I will get them eventually. If not this decade, the next one, surely. <laughs> Let's ask the question. Mm -hmm. The extension question. Mm -hmm. The extension mm -hmm. question. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 let me, before I was gonna give a plug to the, to the no, it's a good one. Uh, for the RAM. Uh, normally we do this with beer, and I think it's <laughs> not an extension <laughs> philosophy. But yeah, that's a better question. Um, yes. But um, the, one of the things we're a bit more, um, we advertise a bit more publicly now is the fact we've got uh, this thing called the Vulcan Advisory Panel, uh, which um, um, Pro Team uh, and other guys are either on or being invited to be on. Uh, and th we, we, I think we don't use it as much as we could. It is a real valuable resource. And we, uh, we've got a lot of feedback uh, more recently about people's experience with Vulcan so far. 
but it's really useful to get guidance as to what should our priorities be between um, here's this thing that we could all agree on as a new feature versus tooling versus what what is it that would make kind of make your lives better as developers rather than kind of the GL model or how we kind of used to do things in, more, in a more closed fashion in the past where here's a new hardware feature, we're exposing it to you in this new version, go off and use it, and then uh, a year later you tell us, oh by the way, we don't like it at all, it's horrible, we don't want to use it. So it's uh, getting to the point where the, the feature um, direction is more driven by developers saying this is what would make our lives better um, in our engine. And, and often the answer is nothing to do with new technology. It's yeah. like fix the damn bugs in the oh, you, drivers. You want, you want a working driver? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't specify right. that before. I mean, so, so one thing that would help sort of guide us um, in terms of one, one thing would help guide us in terms of. Uh, in, in terms of what we would like in the specification is if we could get some more detailed profiling information back from from the from from uh, we, no we could can talk about that it's okay Joe you can talk about that <laughs> uh, I, I think we've we've, uh, we've, we've said it before well, it was publicly discussed that uh, SIGGRAPH is uh, <laughs> something that's being worked on for so. another API but I think that sort of carries through yeah enough. so mm -hmm. uh, we, we said that uh, SIGGRAPH what last was it last year or year before I don't remember now last um, year was it, last, it was last year um, that you know Someone was working on performance query extension for DLS um, GL. Uh, that's since been taken over by someone in this room, who can name themselves <laughs> if they wish. Uh, but uh, the uh, the long term goal, I think, is to try and look at putting that into Vulkan. I don't think we there's no harm in saying that sort of thing. We no, have no time frames right. for it, but you know we're looking at it. By the way, it's a fundamentally evil problem because if you think the hardware differs a lot from the way, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the way it renders stuff, the way they differ in the way they record and track stuff is. But, yes. but uh, yeah, if we have to expose personalities or something, we'll do it, because clearly it's new. Sorry, don't worry. The, the, the person appears to have come up with a solution. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. How come yeah. I'm not If the way? person wants to speak at all, he's <laughs> <they're> welcome <laughs> to you. <laughs> Nobody uh, tells me anything. I only <laughs> found this out today, but to be fair, it matches. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was that you would like to cover about that proposal? <laughs> uh, what, who, where? what was your question? I didn't have a question. I just said, if the person developing that extension wants to identify themselves, that would be Oh, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I can say, I, I've reviewed that proposal, and I think it's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the next one, I think, addresses some of the open issues that we had yeah. um, recently, and yeah. I think it's going in a good direction. I tend to agree, even though I haven't actually seen the latest proposal, but what you said sounds good. So this, this is a very inclusive discussion for anyone that's not under any um, We're not talking about design details, it's fine. I think the, the, the motivation is something worth sharing, in terms of, especially with that, the, the Android tools question. As to yeah. Um, well, so it, it was an effort originally driven by Unity that they wanted to be able to, um, there's lots of vendor tools available, but each of them has a setup cost. That means that a developer tends to favor a single tool, whichever one they set up first, or they have to worry about juggling lots of different platforms. And then as soon as there's an update on any of those tools, they potentially have to learn how to set it up all over again. So the initiative was driven by Unity to try and have a standardized interface where you could get some understanding of what the GPU is doing. Maybe not quite as in-depth as the vendor tools, but you would have something. Um, and yeah, and so the ongoing proposal is basically a kind of spiritual successor to the idea of that, but trying to make it a bit more flexible. Um, I guess we'll have more details over time. Um, are there any other questions, or can I start <laughs> bugging the panel? Okay. Kind of moved topic there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different topic. Um, Tom, you said you wanted to know about pain points. So, um, oh, so, oh, pain points, yeah. Yeah, exactly. pain points. So, like, just one thing I've thought of is the um, memory management. So I talked about that in my talk yeah. earlier. But so, like, generally, I think good advice is to like allocate in large amounts and then manage this all internally in yourself, yourself in the application. But an issue that comes up there is um, managing like uh, paging out a VRAM. Um, yeah. Um, very, very, so Windows is a very special case. And we're, so are, are you specifically concerned about like WPDM interactions? And are you concerned specifically about, no, because you guys work on Linux. Mostly. Yeah, we work on Linux, okay. but no, I'm just generally <laughs> thinking about like, once you start using too much memory or then something else in the system starts using too much VRAM, then mm -hmm. 
the OS is going to start paging out behind uh, your back. Does that have it on Linux? I thought it was just a Windows thing. No, it doesn't no, have No, no, there are separate problems with Windows. Oh, okay. Well, wait a minute. Does it, Linux page stuff out of VRAM? Yeah, I didn't think yeah. it did. On a discrete? Oh. Wow. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, if, so if something else in the system is using too much. But yeah, I mean, it's like applies to anywhere, but it's just like, because I don't, there's no real way to like detect when the OS is doing stuff behind your back. Because I think like generally, if you're trying to handle stuff internally in your application, then you sort of, it's like you have to try and move stuff around yourself between VRAM system RAM. But then if the OS is having to do that as well, you have no way of knowing that that's so, happening. So, so. so I know the guy you need to talk to <laughs> within the group. Um, that, we try really hard not to think of ourselves as mobile guys or desktop guys, but at some point it becomes inevitable. So there is, I mean, there are particularly heinous problems with, uh, in Windows with the way it does that sort of thing. And the guy who works on that told us, this is gonna be a problem for Linux. And, and we said, okay, tell us when it's a problem. Um, so it's been progressing at a low rate of effort to have something and there are mechanisms, and I don't, he explained them once and I completely forgot how it works, but, but there are kind of hints and messages you get from, from Windows when you know, DX is going to eject a resource or you have to ask it to, I forget how it you, works. You basically, I think it's something like tagging and you yeah. say this is priority right. and stuff like so, that. So he's aware of it as a problem and it's, and it's got a certain priority. I think it is not super high, this is James, right? Yeah. yeah. I, um, so, uh, so I don't have a good answer for you now. Yeah, fair and enough. Telling you, yeah, we're working on it is not that useful. So I'm, I'm I was wondering if at least if somebody was working on it. That no, was we're, we're, it's a very rare problem. It's on a list, <laughs> it's on a list <laughs> but we have a lot of yeah. problems. If, if it's something right. you have as a high priority problem, you should then, tell us. Then we'll have I, mean, I, I can tell you that at least on Windows heuristic wouldn't help. Don't go this way. Because <laughs> 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 just don't, don't waste time. I don't know maybe with Linux, but we need something more concrete in that area. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing I found that helps is a dedicated allocation from NVIDIA extension. It mm -hmm. helped a bit. Yeah. Uh, dedicated, yeah. allocation. De dedicated allocation, it helped, but it's still, you know, it's a moot point whether it's what kind of, uh, how many allocations are hidden, uh, what kind of, and if you try to uh, found some pattern, we failed. Yeah. I don't think, you know, that's... Yeah, because we, we've definitely noticed on sometimes, or at least I have some performance issues that are just because, like, the OS has started just paging behind our backs. So yeah, I mean, just like our performance starts. Going I even tried to look with the with the GPUZ, the mm -hmm. usage, usage, you know, total system usage in that time when the game will crash or is, uh, uh, ran out of VRAM, because it's like 90% of our assets in memory are textures, and we have a texture streaming mechanism. We can do whatever we want. We don't even have to swap in and out for VRAM. We just ditch some textures from the scene or. Uh, downsize the uh, ditch the first mipmap of the texture so we have pretty good mechanism to go around this problem but they actually don't have a concrete trigger when to do it uh, no so I'm, I'm just going to say thanks for reminding and, and surfacing that issue yet again it it is being worked on but it's kind of specialized and, and a fair number of the people in the group don't really understand the issue yeah. quite me. If it's on Linux, then it's important. <laughs> no, we understand yeah. it's important. I'd be happy to at least put you in touch with the right person, because mm -hmm. uh, you've been very soon. Um, we've got a few min more minutes before we need to wrap up. Um, if there's, are there any other questions? If not, I will. Oh, oh yeah, yeah Joe. Joe. Hello. He's over there now. Um, I have a question. So, um, I think from from everything we've heard today from developers, I think everybody agrees the kind of more open nature of the way the Kronos Group has developed Vulkan, the open source tools, the CTS tests, the spec itself being very verbose. Everybody's completely behind that and they think it's great. Um, one common pain point that's come up today has been how to handle synchronization. And I know Tobias tried his best to try and explain how this very complicated system works. Um, so I guess this question is mostly for the guys involved in the development of the spec. Um, the idea of the spec is it's meant to describe to a driver implementer how to actually implement the functionality, but it's also the go-to resource for developers. How do you find walking the line between just being the spec and actually being a kind of best practices? So something like synchronization seems like it's essentially a 
there's, there is a general way of solving this that could be efficient across all vendors, but it's hard to actually put in the spec yeah. itself. Do you think that's something that could be addressed in the future? Well, it depends what you mean by addressed. I mean, for, for implementers, I think there's a sort of, it, it's kind of a bit weird. So, I mean, there's a lot of information we have talking amongst ourselves about how things should be implemented. We never sees this, it never goes into the spec, right? There's implementation notes that everyone has in a mental scratch pad somewhere that is not written down, and anyone who came to the Vulcan game at this point would probably have some trouble there. I'm sure people would help, but, um, you know, it's... In, in terms of that line, we walk it on the side of we don't put implementation notes into the spec. Um, and most of what we do put into the spec is useful to both apps and drivers. Uh, you know, the valid usage hints, they're very useful for the um, application in terms of you know, being able to have a validation layer that tells you what you're doing wrong, but they're also useful to the driver to say what you can't do so it can assume things. Um, and ditto for guarantees. It's like, well, application knows that it will do this, and driver knows it has to do that. Um, so there's there's a lot of overlap, and I think trying to split the documents out into a separate implementers and not implements one would be possibly foolish, uh, but having, you know, a companion document of some kind might make sense in the future. I think for you know application developers, there's at least we we've toyed with doing a performance recommendations guide for thing, but it's just such a big effort. We have so many other things to focus on, um, and you know there's quite a lot of uh, tutorials popping up online these days that seem to be doing quite a good job. Uh, maybe not all of them, and they may not all be perfect, but they're doing a pretty good job. And certainly the Lunar SDK has some relatively decent tutorial apps, and at least they're very correct in doing the right thing. They're not extensive, but they are there. Um, so I wouldn't say we're doing the best job of walking the line. I think we're doing a sufficient job of walking the line with the resources we have. Um, it would be nice, obviously, to you know do a lot of other stuff. We, we have so many ideas of things we could do, but we can't do all of them. Yeah, I, th yeah. I think it's unfortunate there that um, there's a lot of good vendor documentation on how this stuff should work, but it's mostly how they would recommend doing it. Or if there's SDKs, they may work on some limited platforms, yeah. like they only work on mobile, well, they only work on desktop. There's a, specific, there's a specific thing there is that at least most vendors seem to have been slowly trickling out performance recommendations for themselves. And in particular, as drivers are still working on optimizing themselves, um, you know, it's, it's hard to put performance recommendations out anyway. My suspicion is that because everyone has some idea of the way things should work in terms of being implemented, at some point, I mean, I know at least we're doing it internally, we're looking at arms recommendations, other people's recommendations, and seeing where's, where ours align and where they don't. And if we spot someone where they don't, then we're gonna look at why that is and if it can be changed. Um, that's sort of a longer term goal, but it can't happen until everyone has perfect Excel. Um, and I think until that happens, we're not gonna be able to get any better than that, but I think we will be able to get better than that eventually. I think that the, the crunch, um, without having for opening the, um, one of the, the discussions of the past, is that the, the main role of the, the Vulcan Working Group at Kronos is to issue the legal uh, spec that this is what implementers do, and that's the, the main goal of the spec. And it's a very high quality document that tells you, uh, uh, from feedback I've had from developers compared to others, this is exactly what will happen, but it's not there as a, as a developer document. And we've discussed kind of in the past, should we try and do something wider and so on. Uh, at the moment, there's basically just the, the, the Vulcan landing page with all the links to the, the many resources out there. But I think maybe it's a useful feedback um, of someone taking that role on. Yeah. There, there was, uh, so I think, I, I think it was one of Dan's rants uh, points. <laughs> <laughs> the, the point that um, it's true that there is a kind of expected implementation. So if you look at things like memory pools and descriptor set pools, they exist, uh, well certainly the memory pools exist to support a particular threading model. Uh, we did have a screaming fight about whether to put them in or not. You took my command buffer pools. Command buffer pools, command sorry. Pools. Um, so yeah, memory pools have a different function. But, um, so we do, we do have sort of an expected behavior and some, some implicit contracts like, like these things won't lock. Now, there, we don't have a conformance test that proves, and we can't write one, that proves that the driver never throws a lock in a place where you didn't expect it. But it's very, very bad behavior for a driver writer to do that. And we could think about trying to codify those more, because um, I think the ramp point that you made was some drivers are doing things in a way that is not the way they're supposed to. 
And maybe if we're not being sufficiently clear about that, it gives us a, a better stick or gives yeah. you a better stick to beat them with when they do <laughs> you, that. You've actually reminded me of one of the worst issues I keep butting my head against is the fact that um, you know our driver teams working on Vulcan, a lot of them come from mm -hmm. GL backgrounds, mm -hmm. and then they look at something and go, Oh, you know what? We could we could optimize that by doing this and ha making a hash map and going blah blah blah. I'm like, no, <laughs> don't you dare! <laughs> it's really hard to like resist doing that. It's like, but it'll go faster. No, not in the long term. It's like crack or something. No, yeah. it, it, it's interesting that you just mentioned the specification in the common pool. In the, because the other day, the Alan, me, and the other programmer were looking at the specification, like for a, I don't know, we had a conversation for about half an hour, an hour. Can we? execute common buffer from the common pool while in the same pool the the other common buffer is recorded it's yes. obvious exactly the obvious <laughs> answer is yes <laughs> trying to find it in specification and this is something the validation layer reports as no oh. Oh. and that, we were like, and we were like okay this is not possible <laughs> this is this is a nightmare <laughs> So we were like looking at the specification for a half an hour or an hour and then we're like, you know, like three old wise men trying to. <laughs> <laughs> so what you want is instead of a, a user guide or spec, you just want a call center. That's my yeah. advice, you can. This is kind of like Kronos, my arm hurts. <laughs> Stop doing that then. Stack exchange, right? Uh, Stack overflow. No, I, I, I do see your point. I mean, I think a few people now have raised, you know, getting more transparency about what a driver should be doing would be useful. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've struggled. We, we did have some implementation notes in the spec <coughs> at the beginning. We took them all out because they were poorly worded. They were poorly defined. They sort of just cluttered things. I mean, mm -hmm. that's not to say we couldn't add something back in, but I think if we're going to do it, we need to have a long, hard think about how we're going to do it. Um, and I do find that most of the times when developers get confused mm -hmm. is because it's something that maybe we... The thing is, any time that happens, it kind of feels to me like maybe there's something lower level we should be exposing rather than that. Like the command buffer pools is elegant as some people seem to think, and actually they are quite a neat solution for some circumstances. Um, I do think there might be something else. We a long do. time for one more? Or do you want to wrap up? What, what time is the bus? Uh, the bus is at half time. Yeah. Oh, we have to go. You, you have a choice between <laughs> questions or beer. Before everyone just rushes to no, the explain bus, how it's going to work. Um, just, well, yeah, but well, you follow Gemma for the bus. We do, oh, we do before need um, some helpers for the monitors just to clear up okay. the demo area. So if anyone can volunteer to just move stuff over, um, please come see Gemma. Uh, for those of you not joining us at the beer festival, thanks again for coming, uh, but you really should be joining us at the beer festival. <laughs>